Good evening. Thank you for staying with us on the big story. So the first uh, bit of this big story this evening, we had Sophia Anuna speaking to the Principal Secretary, State Department for Housing and Urban Development, Charles Hinger. Um, right now, I'd like to pick the mind of Jacob Komenda, who's an Administrative Director at Consumer Grassroots Association. So thank you for joining us on the big story this evening. Let me get a quick reaction uh, from you on what the PSR has had to say. First, he says, uh, Kenyans have a right to housing. We chose this when we voted for the new constitution. And he says there was public participation. Um, and, and basically, it's not a huge sacrifice from where he sits. And thanks, Linda, for hosting me. And to start with, the constitution that was voted, Kenyans went for it. And it's not a clear sign that by passing the constitution, Kenyans were ready for anything that can come along, or for the implementation. To state clearly that uh, there was public participation at, uh, in regard to the housing uh, fund levy, it's not clear that uh, consumers who are engaged, or Kenyans who are engaged, to make sure that they understand how they are going to fund this project. And uh, it's, it, to us, we understand that there was no public participation because if the public was engaged to know how they are going to pay or how they are going to fund the project, then there could have been no big outcry as we have it right now. Then, when you are trying to compare Kenya to Singapore, definitely we are not Singapore. Singapore is not us, and we can't be Singapore anymore. <laughs> the policies that are, are being used in Singapore are very different from the policies that we are using. The corruption that we are experiencing in our country is very high currently. If you can give an example of uh, BAE or the NSSF or NHIF, we have had scandals all over. We can't try to say that this fund will be different from the others that we have been having. There, there has been rooting, the money that we haven't recovered so far. How sure are we that the contribution Kenyans will be making to this? It is going to help them. And you are telling a Kenyan contribute money at the end of the day is not even going to get the house. How can I be contributing for a house that I'm not sure if I will be able to get it. Or if somebody has a mortgage that is paying for currently now, and you're telling this person, please pay another extra amount for somebody to get a house better than the one you have. Or you pay for somebody to have a house that you yourself you don't have. You're telling somebody who is there in Mashinani and is in a very muddy house, contribute money for somebody to be housed in Nairobi. If you take a good example of the houses that were at Kibera, People were given houses, it took a very short time, all the houses were sold out, and they went back to the slums, simply because the state of the, the economy is not favorable for these people. They don't afford even to pay the, the, the electricity tokens in those houses that you are taking them. Mm. That is why they even thought of, let us sell them, we go back to the state of life where we were. Mm. It's interesting that you mentioned Singapore, Samson Mai says, that Singapore is doing this, is Singapore us, are we Singapore? Is we Singapore? Do you believe we'll steal our money? We are not boarding. Just some of the sentiments from Kenyans on social media. But then, uh, sir, uh, listening into the PSC says, this is a good idea. At the end of the day, it will ensure that every single Kenyan has a roof over their head. And there is a provision as well for Kenyans who will be contributing to be owners of these houses, though not 100%. Um, so the government says it will build, what, half a million houses. But then this tax has been collected from over 3 million Kenyans. So that leaves about 2.5 million who will contribute, who may not be able to own these houses. Talk to me about the way the government has gone through around this whole issue. And yesterday, I remember when I was speaking to the PS, we asked him, is there an option for Kenyans to opt out? Um, like you say, assuming I have mortgage, assuming I already own a house. And he said no. Uh, to take it and to take the pool by its own, it, Kenyans are forced to pay for what they are not sure of. And you are telling a Kenyan, contribute money, there will be a house that will be bought by your money. And uh, you are telling the same, same person that you can't opt out. So the question is, why should this person contribute at the first place? Or what is the policy do we have? We don't have any policy in place. Only the regulations that were signed by the CS of transport that they be guarding this house, the, this uh, housing fund. So it is very clear that even before we start, we shouldn't board. Because 
we don't have any regulation that is very clear or a policy that has been read for Kenyans even to understand how, it, how it's going to work. Then we have gone to an extent of saying that uh, court went to court, their cases were, were, were had and the issues that they raised were settled. Who was informed what was raised in the case and how many Kenyans knew what was contained in the case that they had raised. Even today we have had a body that went to court raising the same, same, same issues. Do we really understand what is this fund going to help Kenyans? Or why should we force somebody from all the tax that somebody is paying currently? Kenyans are overtaxed. That is a fact, that Kenyans are overtaxed. We are paying a lot of it. And you're saying that in Kidogo Sana, how can you, sincerely speaking, say that somebody will be paying almost 5,000 tax per month and this person is struggling to live where he's living? It's not making sense completely. Mm. Yeah. To be fair, though, the, C the peer says, okay, fine, we will take your money, but then after 15 years, if you're ineligible to have this house, We'll give you back your money or you can choose a dependent we can give this money to or it can be sent uh, to your pension the, the question is this person will get money after 15 years how sure are we that that money is safe currently now until those 15 years are over if you read correctly in the regulations they are stating that if somebody has uh, rooted the money that will be contributed it have two years imprisonment and ten thousand fine Sincerely speaking, is there anything there that you can tell somebody not truth who can't read 10,000 10, currently? You have gone to an extent of getting 100 billion into your bucket. Then you are told there's only 10,000 or you go to, uh, to, to prison for two years. It's not making sense at the end of the day. And we need to understand that Kenyans have been overburdened. Recently, we were complaining that people are dying in Kenya. They were not complaining of a house where they live. People have issues that they are dealing with day in, day out. Like now, every Kenyan is asking for rain. Can the government really think, how are we going to get rain? Even before we reach to the houses. We haven't even solved the issue of people dying in Turkana and Baringo. But we are here chanting and uh, saying we are going to get affordable housing. You are telling somebody who is dying in Baringo to buy a house for somebody who is living in Nairobi.